Hello and welcome to a new episode of the Computomics podcast. I'm really happy to be joined today by Sebastian Schultheis, co-founder and managing director of Computomics. Hi, Sebastian. Hi, Anna. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. Um, Sebastian, you had quite big news this October, this month. Um, you announced that BASF Venture Capital, or BBC for short, and Amatheon Capital acquired a minority stake in Computomics. That's a huge milestone. Um, what, what was your motivation in searching for a new investment? We had been looking for a, a new investor to complement our existing shareholders uh, that were seed investors and that also uh, contributed to this round once again, uh, HTGF and MBG. And they both um, also encouraged us to uh, find additional uh, funding because we have quite a unique product that we would like to place in the market. And uh, for this, we just need some additional capital to really make sure that um, we could reach all the possible customers for it as soon as possible and that we have the um, marketing and sales team that can then support the rollout of our product. Can you go into more details? What, what exactly will the investment allow you to do? We'll be able to really focus on uh, bringing our predictive breeding technology to the market and um, make sure that um, all the breeding companies that are interested in using it uh, really get a chance to do that and making sure that we have um, a sufficient uh, team in the background to be able to handle additional uh, customers and additional um, markets that we are going to access with the help of this investment round. Sounds smashing. <laughs> um, does the investment include anything besides financial support? Or if, if you can go into details of that support, obviously, that would be awesome. We're really happy to have uh, two experienced venture capital companies on board that are active in the ag tech sector. They have a lot of experience um, when it comes to funding companies like ours that are innovative in agriculture and in plant breeding. And uh, they also have a focus on bringing um, companies that uh, are essentially supporting the EU Green Deal. And um, our innovations include technologies that can contribute to producing affordable and sustainable food. And that is something that also these investors really want to support. I'm sure that that played a big role in their decision to to fund you. Can you can you uh, tell us a little bit how how this whole process worked out? You already said that they are specialized in ag tech um, and is especially interested maybe in in funding companies with an innovative approach like yours that goes along with uh, policies like the the Green Deal, the EU Green Deal. Um, how how did this this whole process work with the two investors? So we did a regular uh, due diligence um, with them. They looked at uh, all aspects um, of our company. And since we already had um, HTGF and MBG as existing shareholders um, with, uh, of course, a long investment history um, that uh, already helped us have the processes in place and um, know about uh, a process like a due diligence uh, analysis from a potential investor. So we are well prepared and we're able to provide them all of the necessary documentation and information that they were requesting. And um, that also streamlined this process for us um, because we had most of the uh, information already prepared. And um, the uh, biggest step and the most time uh, we spent on actually explaining our technology to them and uh, the strategic impact that it can have on uh, new crop varieties that we can help uh, breeders create that can withstand future climate conditions. And for them to be able to understand this and to understand the technology behind it, that allowed us then to convince them that this is a solid investment for them. I'm thinking now, in case we have uh, listeners uh, listening who aren't that familiar yet with what you're doing, um, can you just give a brief, uh, brief explanation? What is that technology or what is special about it? Of course, yeah. Our technology offers 
a proprietary machine learning uh, platform basically that um, applies or um, we use AI to combine genetics and plant phenotype data, so external characteristics and environmental data so that we can help predict uh, what a certain new variety of a crop is actually going to do in the field, how it's going to perform, how much yield it's going to bring and uh, what kinds of climate conditions it will be able to uh, withstand. So the goal for plant breeders is usually to breed something that's very resilient, that can uh, do well in a large range of different climates uh, that can happen during a year. And our technology is able to um, very quickly uh, find those combinations of plants where this is the case and uh, it helps them select uh, the right varieties to test in the field from all of the millions of crosses that they could be doing. And um, that helps accelerate their process and also uncovers novel combinations of varieties that they wouldn't have dared to cross before because maybe the parents that they would have to use for this don't really look like they could produce uh, great offspring. But um, in some cases, the sum is just... Um, the grand total is more than the sum of the parts of the parents that go into it. So a combination of the right genetics uh, can really produce wonderful new plants that then withstand these new climate conditions. And uh, in, in what way does that also help with the Green Deal policy or the Green Deal plans of, of the EU? Where, where do you fit in there? So what we see today is that um, in order to grow exactly the same plants uh, that we have been growing for a long time in these uh, agricultural fields in Europe, we just need a lot of chemicals to do it. And we also need um, quite a bit of um, yeah, uh, support uh, for these plants that um, in order to provide the same amount of yield. So the um, Green Deal aims at reducing um, the inputs uh, all of the fertilizer and uh, other chemicals that have to be used in the fields and also um, the carbon emissions of agriculture and uh, by breeding uh, varieties that are adapted to new conditions that are maybe naturally resistant to certain pests and that um, can really accelerate sustainable agricultural development is how we can contribute to the green deal policies so g given that uh, impact, it's a small wonder that BBC and MFA on um, were interested in, in going in. Um, how will they be involved now that they are minority stakeholders in, in Computomics? In which areas will they be involved? We did select them as investors because of their strategic outlook on uh, the entire agricultural ecosystem, as well as their um, previous knowledge and business models and uh, their experience there. So we're um, looking forward to having joint uh, strategy sessions with them um, in order to uncover um, additional knowledge that they have about um, our markets, about our strategies that we want to put in place. And um, we'll use them as a sounding board in our um, basically advisory committee that we've put together. And um, we also are, um, of course, uh, looking for synergistic um, possibilities within their company portfolio. So the other investments that they've made in the past, um, we're looking to uh, connect with companies that um, might have uh, an interesting product for us or a company where we could offer something to them and uh, make sure that the ecosystem that they have been building really interconnects and um, is also in a way producing in a total more than the sum of these individual companies could uh, individually achieve. And another aspect for us is of course that um, it allowed us to secure our entrepreneurial independence uh, by them only acquiring a minority stake. And that's one of the core values, so all of the management decisions are still being made by the founders and um, by our management team. And the journey that we are on together um, should allow us then to potentially uh, seek out 
additional investment in the future if we decide that we need it. Mm -hmm. I think that's a that's a very important part. If you uh, you know if you think about how existing clients also uh, think about this this news, um, how would you say does the investment impact them? So for us, of course, uh, secure data handling processes have always been in place, and uh, we will continue to use those to ensure that all client data is kept confidential and protected, and um, only the um, people that are actually working on the results uh, for our clients have access to these individual project data. And we make sure that um, this uh, policy uh, stays in place, and we also make Uh, decisions about um, how to interact um, with new clients just based on our own um, agenda and our own uh, decisions within the management team and sales team. Um, so that's not a part where we will have any kind of um, additional input uh, from our investors. They're happy if we're able to increase our client base in any direction. Yeah, and would you say, I mean, this is allaying fears, you know, data security is a huge point, obviously, uh, but um, also thinking about the opportunities that um, this this access to, to uh, a bigger ecosystem gives you. Um, do you have any specific plans or, or ideas towards that? So the um, ecosystem, in a way, provides us with an opportunity to potentially build a larger um product uh, potentially together with um, one of the partner companies uh, that are already portfolio companies of our new investors. And uh, that would uh, provide additional opportunities also for our customers to potentially access something that hasn't been there before by combining these new parts. Um, the data security um, will always remain our top priority and we can make sure that um, any data that clients entrust us is protected and uh, kept confidential, and we make sure that um, this is also true for any new clients that are onboarded, uh, especially with um, very important data for them, which um, includes genotyping and, of course, performance data that they provide us with for the predictions. Mm -hmm. Everything you just said uh shows me that there is really a long-term plan, uh, a, a very optimistic and also strategic outlook into the future um, of Computomics and uh, and the products that you're developing. Um, what would you say, what are your plans or what is your outlook if you are looking into that future? Can you Can you give us a bit of an insight into that? So our uh, ultimate goal is to create a new reality in which uh, these kinds of predictions that we're able to do with our technology and that we're able to provide to clients are being used routinely, um, even beyond uh, just client breeding decisions, but also for other types of decisions like um, placement and um, what kinds of crops to grow where, basically. And um, the other aspect of uh, our technology is that we can um, basically put in as a variable not only uh, the crops themselves, but also environmental conditions. So if we're moving to controlled environment agriculture, to uh, vertical farming and um, things like that, uh, the question becomes, um, how do we create an optimal environment for the plants that um, we have already selected? And uh, this question um, can, of course, be just like with plant breeding answered by doing all sorts of experiments, all sorts of small tweaks to individual parameters. But as soon as you have things like lighting and uh, temperature and humidity, you're adding additional variables and making a very complex um, uh, equation to solve. And that's something that machine learning is really good at. And our technology is really um, useful for understanding which kinds of environment settings uh, should you be testing next in order to have maximum information about how the plants react to it in order to get to an optimal setting for these controlled environments. Mm -hmm. 
I, I would completely agree. I mean, if especially if you're looking at um, experimental studies, that they, they can't have that same scope if you have to go basically one by one by one. <laughs> um, is there is there anything specific you're looking forward to uh, this year? I mean, you've you've had uh, like all of us a year and a half of pandemic with all the changes that entailed, um, and now this huge new milestone and your outlooks. Um, what do you look forward to? For the rest of this year and maybe next year. So, what uh, has really provided additional um, perspectives and uh, provided us with new uh, inputs as well is um, once again coming together um, with uh, our team uh, in the office, uh, being able to connect with people um, in these kinds of more relaxed and um, uh, more creative. Uh, thinking processes that we can engage in once we're together in a room and trying to come up with new ideas. That's something that has um, maybe been lacking over uh, the last one and a half years when people are individually booking appointments, um, making sure that an agenda is followed, and then um, you disconnect. And um, any ideas or um, new things uh, that you can come up uh, by yourself um, might be a bit... Uh, too easily dismissed if you're not immediately discussing them with someone who then also thinks it's a great idea. So I think um, there was some uh, creativity lost uh, over these last few months that uh, we are now regaining by uh, coming together and discussing things um, in such a more relaxed atmosphere. And I'm also hoping that um, one of the most important avenues for us to meet customers and engage with clients was um, conferences that we could travel mm -hmm. to. And I'm hoping that um, over the next few months, uh, additional conferences will be held in person again and additional people will dare to travel again so that we can meet them at these uh, venues like ASTA and um, other conferences that are coming up so that we can uh, engage with clients in that way. With clients and also potential new team members, right? Because if I if I take what you said earlier correctly, then that means your team will also be growing. You will have to to find new people to to be creative with and and continue to develop uh, the the computomics products and and uh, processes, right? Yeah, so that's certainly um, one avenue where we also found new team members. Luckily, being uh, present here in Tübingen with uh, Cyber Valley and other um, great uh, institutions around us, um, it wasn't uh, difficult to attract um, very good people to uh, start working with us. Um, so luckily, this isn't uh, a bottleneck for us at this location. But um, certainly, um, we do welcome any kind of interactions at our booths and um, are happy to talk to additional people. Uh, we have certainly hired uh, people that we first met on these kinds of conferences in the past. So that's something that we would like to continue and um, are looking forward to, to doing more of in the next few months. I'm sure you do. Thank you so much, Sebastian, for taking the time uh, to talk with me about this, this big news, this huge milestone um, and, and also your outlook to the future. It sounds very exciting and I hope you'll be back here maybe in a year or so <laughs> for the next season um, and, and tell us a little more about all the developments uh, with Computomics. So thank you. Yes, thank you for having me and happy to do that. Great. And uh, to all you listeners out there, um, thank you for, for listening to this episode and I hope you'll be back for the next one. And meanwhile, feel free to check out the computomics.com website. It has some news, including the big announcement um, and more on what Computomics is up to. See you next time. <laughs>